Welcome to my channel, my name is Prisca Jordan and today I have 20 essential moving tips to take your move from stressful and chaotic to smooth and organized. Now I just recently moved for about my 20th time. I've lived in eight states, sometimes multiple cities within each state and sometimes multiple moves within each city. So I know a thing or two about moving and these are the tips that I've just picked up over the years that are what I still use today, including my most recent move to Florida. As a side note, I really hope to stay here for a long, long time because it is beautiful. With 20 or so moves under my belt, I know that these tips will help you to have a smoother transition next time it comes. First and foremost, let's fix the mindset around moving. Moving is blank. How do you fill in that blank? Last month when I told people I was moving, I got responses like, oh, moving so hard, moving sucks. But to me, moving can actually be fun if you have the right systems in place. So before we talk about systems and how to pack particular items, my first tip with moving is to change your mindset around it because you have to do it so you might as well find the silver lining in it all. Here are three silver linings that I think about. If you're moving, it's a perfect opportunity to declutter and purge things that you're not using in your day-to-day -day life. Secondly, if you work out, it's an opportunity to test your strength in a real-world application. And thirdly, most personally to me, if you've been stuck in bad habits or routines, then it's a really great opportunity to reset and start new habits. So right now I challenge you to list the positive opportunities that come with your upcoming move and stay focused on those. All right, would you recommend moving in Florida in August? No way. <laughs> I, it's fantastic, Florida's beautiful. <laughs> Great, so now that we're looking for ways to make this a positive experience, here's my system to keep your move organized. My second tip for your move is to schedule a full month to prepare mentally and with all your stuff. So seriously, I recommend that you do not wait until the last two weeks or the last week to just pack all your stuff in boxes because it will be chaotic and it'll be a stressful experience, more stressful than it really needs to be. Instead, schedule activities for each week of the month leading up to your big move and that brings us to what to do four weeks out. Before you pack a single item, you need to declutter. And definitely not the day before you move out. See, moving is certainly more stressful than like not moving. So when you're stressed, you're not going to be clear headed to know whether you want to part ways with that fine china gravy dish that you've like never in your life used. And that's because stress clouds your thinking. So if you wait to declutter, you'll probably not declutter very much and end up bringing a lot of clutter along with you. So instead, I recommend you start four weeks out and do it slowly. Here's my schedule for decluttering. So four weeks out, I will start decluttering one room at a time, one room per day. And that way, if you miss a day, like you only have to declutter two rooms, not declutter your entire house on a Saturday. So I'll write each room on a day of the week on the calendar, and that's my job for the day. Sometimes this takes 20 minutes, sometimes it takes an hour, if it's the kitchen, for example. So I also recommend that you do not start with your most complicated, emotional decluttering project. If you're very attached to your clothes, but you don't wear most of them, then I wouldn't start there. Just start with a room that's least intimidating to you. I highly recommend making two passes with your decluttering. One thorough declutter four weeks out and the other as you're packing. Why? Because sometimes there are things you don't need but it takes a little bit more convincing to part ways with and your subconscious has been working on decluttering since you started this process four weeks out. And as you pack those heavy boxes, this like miraculous clarity happens that you realize I really don't need that gravy dish. Now, if you need more help with decluttering, you're in luck. I just posted a video of 35 things that you can declutter before you move. I'll link it at the end of this video for you to watch next. 
Now that you've spent week four decluttering, we're getting into three weeks out from your big move. This is when we start the packing process and I have a very good tip for you. Start with packing your least used stuff first. You can think of the more frivolous things like picture frames, window dressings, and fragile decor items. These take the most care, read time, so you want to start that early so you're very cautious as you're packing. And you can prevent things from being broken in transit because they were just sloppily thrown in a box. With fragile items, I like to pack pieces within pieces, but this formula would only work if you use packing material or some type of um, soft material. So I'm packing one thing and then wrapping it up, putting it inside of another, wrapping it up, and then putting it in another. And then I shake it to make sure that there's no movement there. And then to pack the moving box, start with stuffing the bottom of the box with a little bit of packing material to absorb a little bit of shock. And then you want things to be very snug, but not so tight that there's pressure against these fragile pieces. Finish off the box by adding a little bit more packing material at the top to absorb shock and be sure to label your box fragile. I like to also pack books pretty early on because I can see the boxes piling up and that feels like progress so it's an easy win. Now I'll go through several tips of how to pack certain items and this is going to be three weeks out, two weeks out, and one week out so let's get started with that. Some of the things you can pack very early on are your photo frames and hanging wall decor. These are items you wanna take more caution with when packing, so you want to do this early on. Now, how do you pack your photo frames so they don't break? Here's a tip I picked up on the internet and it seems to be working better for me. Stack them vertically up and down instead of on top of each other. This allows the pressure of the weight to distribute evenly and no one single glass frame is getting all of the weight. To stuff the box, I'm just using old pieces of paper that came in different packages I received and some plush bath towels, and that will just ensure that everything is packed in there very nicely. At the end, I just pick up the box and shake it a little. If I hear any glass rattling around, that's a problem. So I'll go back in and fix that to make sure everything's nice and tight. And just as a side note, this is a renter friendly hack. These command strips work so well. I've put them on painted doors, painted walls. It won't damage the walls unless the paint is already damaged. But as you can see here, it came off so smoothly. So if you've never used command strips, I recommend you try them out. Here's a tip that will pay off in the future. Put all of your furniture screws in a Ziploc bag and label it accordingly, and that will help you have a smooth unpacking day when you get to your next home. Pack your least used items in advance. Since you're moving and won't be hosting any large parties, you won't need your serving platters. You also likely won't need three machines to mix things, so rifle through and figure out what can be packed this early in the process. The worst case scenario is that you've packed all your potato mashers and have to improvise how to mash potatoes with an unlikely utensil. Speaking of utensils, I recommend wrapping your utensils in saran wrap so they don't fall out of their tray. It also helps to protect them along a bumpy road. Here's a nifty tip for how to pack plates. Use your hollow containers of kitchenware like pots and you can pad these plates with bubble wrap or you can use towels, bed sheets, or any kind of clothes you're packing anyway to surround the plates. I typically use my towels and bed sheets for glassware and that helps me to save some costs on excess bubble wrap, but it still provides an added layer of protection. And just in case you're curious, this is what my kitchen looked like after my first pass two weeks before we moved. I left out just enough to keep us eating and having sustenance before we moved. Now here's what I do when I'm packing my wardrobe. 
I want to take some time and care packing this and honestly I'm fine with repeating outfits for the last couple of weeks I'm in a place so I pack away most of my wardrobe but I keep out about a week's worth of clothes enough that at the end of the week I can do laundry and repeat those outfits the following week so I'll leave those outfits either in a suitcase in the side of my closet or just tucked away so I know don't pack those and then pack the other 90-95% of my wardrobe. If the idea of not having access to your entire closet conjures up feelings of fear, then don't worry, you're very unlikely to be invited to a white tie state dinner at the last minute. But if you think you there might be some type of going out or elegant event, then just pull one outfit that you'll wear if you're invited somewhere last minute. So right now, things are in boxes everywhere. Um, some things just aren't packed up, so they're just kind of like this situation. I have a chair as a desk right now. I usually have all this stuff organized, but as someone who's really organized typically, my chest feels heavy from all of the stuff being out. But I think packing up my closet in a very orderly fashion will help me to feel a little bit better. So let me show you how I do it. To pack up my wardrobe, I'm going to use trash bags to protect my clothes from too much friction and that'll just help bundle them together and keep them on the hangers. So I punch a hole through the bottom of the trash bag, push the hanger heads through, turn it upside down and tie it off. I do this with all the rest of my clothes and then I'm ready to put them in the box. Now clothes are very heavy, so I would recommend not using an extra large box like I did. You'll see me struggle in a second, but then I just place them in the box and it's ready to move into the truck. I calculated that it would take me four of those double tall hanging wardrobe boxes to pack the hanging items that I own. Instead, I used three short boxes, which saved me a lot of room in the moving truck. Now, if you have very nice items or you just don't want to iron or steam your clothes afterwards, then I would recommend those, but there's still going to be a little bit of maintenance that has to be done once you get to your next space because I've used the wardrobe boxes before. However, I've used my method several times and it's worked out every time just fine. I always only have my current season wardrobe in my closet for use and I pack away the off season wardrobe. So right now my fall winter clothes are packed away and not hanging up in my closet. Um, those I just transport the way they're already packed, which is in vacuum sealed bags. I really like these vacuum sealed bags for off season wardrobes. You can stuff them under your bed. You can put them in suitcases or above your closet and it's out of your way so you're not having decision fatigue for what to wear every day with clothes that aren't really viable options. I'll leave the vacuum seal bags I recommend in the description box below. The ones that I have are not available now because I've had them for so long. But just remember that once you pack these compacted bags, they're still going to be very heavy. So use a smaller box or a suitcase. Don't overload the box. Speaking of suitcases, I found this moving hack off of YouTube. You can use your suitcase as an easier way to transport fragile or heavy items. I saw one YouTuber recommending packing plates in your suitcase so that you can just roll it off. If you use this tip, be sure to label the suitcase either fragile or heavy or both so everybody in your moving team knows to take good care of it. You might be thinking, packing shoes, that's easy. You just throw them in a trash bag and call it a day. But that's how your shoes end up looking visibly wonky on the other side. 
See, shoes need to retain their shape. A lot of times they're either made out of leather or something that mimics the feeling of leather. So they have to retain their shape in transport or they'll look misshapen for probably ever. So instead of creating unnecessary wear and tear, I want you to take each shoe, stuff it with socks or any other kind of clothing item. And then if you still have the old boxes, put them in the old boxes so they're not scuffing up each other. If you don't have the old boxes, you can use little grocery tree bags to make sure each one is buffered and they aren't bumping up against each other. And then I just take those bags or boxes of shoes and put it in a larger box for transport. This will help your shoes to stay in good condition as you're moving. Labeling your boxes will help anyone who is on your moving team to know how to treat the boxes that they're carrying, including your spouse who, bless his heart, doesn't want to ask you the contents of every similar looking cardboard box. Label which room every box belongs in and if it's heavy or fragile or both. Typically I'll use shorthand like KIT for kitchen or LIV for living room, but this time our boxes were already pre-printed with labels, so I just used a bold red marker to denote which room each box belonged in. This will really make your move day go much smoother. And when you're unpacking boxes, instead of hauling them back and forth between rooms, each box is in the correct room. Now let's fast forward to the week of your move. These last few tips will help you to stay organized as you move and unpack. In the final few days before your move, you wanna pack an overnight bag that will have a couple sets of clothes in your toiletry so you don't have to be rifling through boxes while you're trying to pack all the boxes. I like to unpack at least two days worth, so that's one less thing I have to think about as I'm dog tired from lifting so many heavy boxes. And the next bag to pack is what I call the not hot bag. It's the stuff that you don't wanna get overheated in the moving truck. So I actually had a box of this stuff. I ended up using my portable cooler to keep my supplements, vitamins, any toiletries that I didn't wanna get overheated, and some other items like our laptops and house plants, which I just kept on a seat in our truck. As a side note, it's best to clue in the people who are helping you move that this is a bag you don't want just shoved in the back of the moving truck. <laughs> that way you're not packing and repacking the whole thing. Not that I've ever done that. Another very useful tip for a seamless unpacking is to create a first to unload box. You're gonna wanna put toilet paper in there, some hand soap, your box cutters, your coffee pot, if like me, you're kind of addicted and have to have it in the morning to even wake up, and some hand tools for things like assembling your bed. Basically anything you need for the first few days of your move to keep the process flowing, that's what you want in your first to unload box. The last moving tip is for the final moments before you say goodbye to your old home. I hope there were a lot of good times, maybe some bad times that grew your resiliency, and certainly beautiful souls you met along your journey. Take a pause to reflect on what you've experienced, the things you're grateful for, and say thank you to the people who have been in your corner the entire time. Before you go, let me know if you enjoyed this video by hitting the like button. And while you're down there, leave a comment with your best moving tip. I'm hoping next week's video will be a full tour of our condo. The decorating is in process, but if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week. Until then, take care.